The Jell-O program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston. No, Pepper. no, Don, hold it for heaven's sake. Remember our new product. Oh, yes. The Grape Nuts Flakes program. <laughs> that starring... Grape Nuts Flakes, great. The Grape Nuts oh, Flakes I'll program starring Jack <laughs> Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis A. Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson, coming to you from the Army Air Base at Santa Ana, California. <laughs> friends, did this ever happen to you? You dash out of bed, stub your toe on the alarm clock, nick your face while you're shaving, get the shirt missing a button, clump downstairs wearing your before breakfast blitzkrieg look, and right there on the table sits a great big tempting bowl full of grape nuts flakes. And what happens now? Well, you sample that outstanding grape nuts flakes flavor. It's your same favorite grape nuts flavor in toasty brown flake form, moldy rich and sweet as a nut. So you look at your wife and you actually beam. For there's plenty of satisfaction in that grand goodness, the flavor that's made Grape Nuts Flakes America's fastest-growing cereal. That's because Grape Nuts Flakes are made in a different way. They're a blend of two luscious grains, sun-ripened wheat and malted barley, toasted golden brown and crisp and delicate, tempting flakes. So for smooth-tasting, smooth-tempered breakfast that baby your budget, ask for delicious, thrifty Grape Nuts Flakes in the big 12-ounce package. March played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, since we're at the Army Air Base at Santa Ana, we would like to reenact the scene which took place last Thursday when two cadets from this very field paid a visit to Jack Benny at his home in Beverly Hills. Oh, Don, who wants to hear about that? Jack and Rochester were hard at work in the kitchen, as I understand it, little suspecting that anyone would drop their <clears throat> Oh, boy, that sure smells good. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. As I go riding, see what else? Tomatoes, vinegar, onions. Oh, Rochester, did you cut up those onions like I told you to? Rochester, did you cut up those onions? Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm cutting them up now, boss. <laughs> oh, pull yourself together. How many onions you got there? About five, boss. Do you want any more? <laughs> yes, get busy. And stop crying. Uh, I can't help it, boss. <laughs> Look, Rochester, if the onions make you cry while you're chopping them up, don't stand so close to them. Close to them? I'm using a hole now. <laughs> All right, I'll do the onions. And you get these jars ready. Have you got the labels? Here they are. Mother Benny's old-fashioned homemade chili sauce. <laughs> hey, they're pretty fancy, aren't they? Yeah, and I like our new slogan. Our chili is hot on rump roaster pot. <laughs> yeah, that ought to get us plenty of customers. Well, I might as well finish these onions myself. Mmm, this sauce don't look just right. You know, boss, I don't think we got enough tomatoes in here. I said I don't think we got enough tomatoes in here. Shall I put some more tomatoes in, Mr. Benny? There's plenty of tomatoes in there. All the recipe calls for. <laughs> well, the onions are ready. Dump them in, Rochester. Okay. I want to get all this stuff cooked and bottled before Miss Livingston gets here. I promise to take her shopping. It's only 10.30, boss. 10.30? Oh, my goodness. Tune in the radio, Rochester. Tune it in. What's the matter? It's time for that prog program. Tune in the radio. Oh, yes. Yes! Sally Sutton! <laughs> I don't want to miss today's episode. Here's the station, boss. Thank heaven. And so, chin up, but with tears in the eyes, <laughs> Sally Sutton has given up hope of a reconciliation with her husband, Paul, and decided on the most drastic of all steps, a divorce. Well, her, her husband has been playing around, Rochester. That's all, that's all she can do. Hasn't she got a razor? No. <laughs> As we fade in on the Sutton Cottage, a cottage that was once a happy American home, 
we find Sally in conference with her friend and advisor, old Judge Hooper. Sally is speaking. I, I can't go on, Judge Hooper. I can't go on like this. It's too much. There, there now, Sally. <laughs> Paul, the best years of my life. Yes, Sally, honey. And I have to admire the way you've gone through all this. <laughs> Sin up, but with tear-dimmed eyes. <laughs> you said it. Tell me, old Judge Hooper, what shall I do about Paul? Uh, you might as well face it, Sally, honey. Paul's a drinking man. And if when there's one thing I can't stand, it's a, <clears throat> a drinking man. <laughs> Well, what's that? I think the old judge is loaded. <laughs> oh, he couldn't be. And your advice, Judge? You just got to get a divorce, Sally, honey. Open up, open up, quick. Oh, my goodness. Sally's house is on fire. That's us, boss. The chili sauce just boiled over. <laughs> well, shut off the gas and stir it. Come in. Why, it's old Doc Thompson. Hello, Sally. Hello, old Judge Hooper. Hello, old Doc, honey. <laughs> he calls everybody honey. I've got bad news for you, Sally. It's about your husband, Paul. Paul? What about Paul? The emergency hospital called just now and told me... Yes? That your husband... Yes, yes? That your husband, Paul... Yes, yes, yes? <laughs> there goes that gold darn radio again. <laughs> Quick, Rochester, fix it. Fix it? Yeah, hit it. Take it, shake it. That's the way you're fixing the alarm clock. Oh, wait a minute. Let me do it. Of all times for this thing to go haywire, I want to know what happened to Paul. Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. You ready to take me shopping? I can't take you now, Mary. Paul's in the emergency hospital. Paul Whiteman? No, no. Paul Sutton. The darn radio went on the blink. Right in the middle of the heartache of Sally Sutton. Fix it, boss. There, good. Good, it's working again. Quiet now. Quiet, Rochester. And so, don't forget to tune in tomorrow morning <laughs> for another installment in the heartaches of Sally Sutton. Well, I'll be... Till then, this is Truman Clapsaddle. <laughs> Saying au revoir. Wait a minute, what happened to Paul? Oh, shut up. <laughs> well, I'll just have to wait until tomorrow morning, I guess. Let's get back to our canning, Rochester. What is that stuff, Jack? Homemade chili sauce. Come on, Rochester, let's start pouring it in the bottles. You hold the funnel. Oh, fine. Chili sauce and bromo seltzer bottles. Well, I had a lot of them around. You know how I worry. <laughs> Now, come on, Rochester. Let's get this stuff all bottled. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, I got jingle. Spurs that jingle, jingle. As I go jingle. riding merrily As along. As I go riding merrily And they sing, oh, ain't you glad and you're singing? Oh, ain't you glad And that song ain't so Ladies and gentlemen, let us continue with our story of what happened when the two cadets from Santa Ana visited Jack's home. As you remember, Jack, Mary, and Rochester were bottling chili sauce in the kitchen. As I go riding merrily... There, that's that. Now, how many bottles did we get out of this batch, Rochester? Three dozen, not counting the two that blew up. <laughs> blew up? I didn't hear any of them blow up. Look for yourself, boss. That ain't a sunset on the ceiling. <laughs> Well, wipe it off. Come on, Mary, I'll take you shopping. The car's out in the driveway. Okay. And incidentally, Mary, this will be your last ride in the Maxwell. I'm turning it in next week to the junk salvage drive. Do you think they'll take it? Yes. <laughs> Come on, grab a few of these bottles. I got a rush order from the farmer's market. I am not walking through Beverly Hills with my arm full of chili sauce. Oh, all right, I'll take it. There. 
Uh-oh, here comes that crazy boy of ours, boss. He's not crazy. Well, hello, Mr. Billingsley. Hello, Mr. Benny. Taking some of your blood to the Red Cross, I think. <laughs> No. No, 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 Mr. Billingsley. Uh, this is chili sauce. By the way, would you like to go to the farmer's market with us? No, thank you. I must go out to my laboratory and work on my new parachute idea. Uh, what's that? I'm putting rip cords on mushrooms. <laughs> mushrooms for rip cords? For parachutes? <laughs> my goodness. <laughs> My goodness, isn't that dangerous? Oh, yes. You might get a tote, too. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Why, Joe, you certainly are. <laughs> hmm. now, it's, now it's parachute. That Mr. Billingsley certainly is a genius when it comes to inventing things. Oh, yeah? How about that wristwatch he made for me? What's the matter with that watch? Every time I go to wine, it's the hands get fresh with me. <laughs> oh, stop dreaming things up, will you? See who's at the door, Rochester. Okay, Mother Bennett. That's only for the labels. Now, see who's at the door. Okay. That Rochester is so lazy today. Well, naturally, it's Thursday. It's day off. Now, <laughs> Not so loud. I didn't tear Wednesday off the calendar. <laughs> well, look who's here, Phil Harris. And he's got his baby with him. Hello, Phil. Hello, Jackson, Mary. You know, I had the kid out for a ride on my motorcycle, so I thought I'd drop in. What? You brought a five-month-old baby all the way from Encino on a motorcycle? We only made one stop, Jackson. Changed oil and diapers. <laughs> hmm, that kid's probably scared to death. Ah, oh, Jackson, she loved it. <laughs> oh, what a baby, always laughing Yeah, you know, Phil, I think she's gonna have curly hair just like you Sure, them things are liable to be hereditary <laughs> Hereditary? He means it runs in the family, Lily <laughs> I know what he means <laughs> Oh, there she goes giggling again Oh, let me hold the baby, Phil No, no, Mary, just let her sit on the table here and play with these bottles Hmm. Careful now, darling. Careful now, sweetheart. <laughs> Make a note of that, Rochester. One bottle of chili sauce to Mr. Harris, 15 cents. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. Wait a minute now. I ain't responsible for nothing my kid does. This baby's a minor. I don't care if she's John L. Lewis. You're paying for that... <laughs> Come on, fork over. Uh oh. Now, see what you did? You made the baby cry. Now, now, baby. Here's another bottle of chili sauce to play with. Your daddy can afford it. Here, here, take the bottle. There, now. Look out, Jack. Duck! Ooh. Ooh. Holy smoke, she knocked him out. Quick, Rochester, get some water. Mr. Benny's unconscious. Let him lay there. He ain't been getting much sleep lately. <laughs> Jack, Jack, speak to me. Oh, where am I? Sorry, Jackson, but my baby conked you with a bottle. Did the bottle break? Absolutely not. No sale, Jack. <laughs> oh, my head. Listen, Phil, it's all right for you and your baby to come over and pay me a friendly visit. But when that kid of yours deliberately picks up a bottle of Mother Benny's old-fashioned homemade chili sauce and cocks your old Uncle Jack on the head with it, that's going to... <laughs> G-H, I got a gal in Kalamazoo. I don't want to boast, but I know she's the toast of Kalamazoo. Zoo, 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 zoo. Years have gone by, my, 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 how she grew. But I liked her looks when I carried her books in Kalamazoo. Zoo, 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 zoo. I'm going to send a wire, hopping on a flyer, leaving today. Am I dreaming? I can hear screaming. Hi, you, Mr. Jackson. Everything's okay. A-L-A-M-A-Z-O. What a gal. She's some Peru. I'll make my bid for that freckle-faced kid I'm hurrying to. I'm going to Michigan to see the sweetest gal in Kalamazoo.
send the wire hopping on a fly leaving today. Am I dreaming? I can hear screaming. Hiya, Jackson. Everything's okay. A-L-A-M-A-Z-O. What a gal. She's some Peru. I'll make my bid for that freckle-faced kid I'm hurrying to. I'm going to Michigan to see the sweetest gal in Calumet. That was I Got a Gal in Kalamazoo, played by Phil Harris in the orchestra. And speaking of Kalamazoo, ladies... Whether you're a gal in Kalamazoo or Kankakoo... Oh, Brother Rue. Why not serve your husband a bang-up breakfast treat? Just try him on Grapes Nuts Flakes. There you go again. Don, that's great, great. And now, let us continue with our story of what happened when the two cadets from Santa Ana visited Jack in Beverly Hills. As we left Jack, he had been knocked cold by a tap from a tiny pot. Hmm. Look at that lump on my head. I'm glad Phil took the baby home. Believe me, the next time that kid starts after me, I'm going to be set. I'm going to be ready. Oh, put your fist down, killer. (laughs) Well, I'm mad. Come on, let's take these bottles over to the market. You take the bottles out, Rochester. I'll answer the door. Coming, coming. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. Oh, my head. As I go riding. Well, 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 a couple of soldiers. Hello, fellas. Hello. Say, we're cadets from Santa Ana, and we're visiting the movie stars' homes. (laughs) You, uh, you are? Yeah. Can you tell us where Miss Barbara Stanwyck lives? Barbara Stanwyck? Uh Uh-huh. Yes, yes, she lives about four blocks down the street. But as, uh... (laughs) As long as you're visiting some of the big movie stars. <laughs> uh, this, uh, this happens to be Jack Benny's house. I'm Benny. Oh, is your son at home? <laughs> no, look, I'm, I'm Jack Benny, me. Jello again. I mean, great nuts place again. This is Jack Benny. <laughs> uh, come on, uh, come on in, boys. Uh, say, uh, what do you got that dress on for? Oh, oh, this is an apron. I've been making chili sauce. Come on in. Oh, well, thanks just the same, but we're especially anxious to meet Barbara Stanwyck. Oh, yes, yes. Babs. Uh, she's a swell girl. Babs? Who's Babs? That's, uh, <laughs> that's Barbara Stanwyck, you see. All her close friends call her Babs. I'll tell you what, fellas, it's only a short way. I'll walk you over there. Come on, Jack. Let's go shopping. Oh, Mary, come here a minute. I want you fellas to meet Mary Livingston. She's a stooge on my program. What was that? Don't sneak up on me. Uh, the, the Mary, uh, these, these boys are cadets from Santa Ana. Oh, hello, fellas. Gee, Mary Livingston. Wow, a woman. <laughs> I didn't know we had so many people in our front yard. (laughs) Say, Mary, uh, Mary, I promised to take the boys over to Bab's house. Uh, Would you like to come along? Who's Bab? Bab Stanwyck, Barbara. Come on, come on, fellas, let's go. Here we are. I hope Babs is home. I got spurs that jingle, jangle, jingle. Are you excited, boys? Oh, we sure are. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm uh, Jack Benny. Uh, These two cadets would like to meet Miss Stanwyck. Come on, fellas, let's go in. Uh, Just a moment, please. Miss Stanwyck is taking a bath. Oh. Oh, then I'll wait. You certainly will. Say, you'll, uh, you'll love Babs, fella. She's my favorite, too. Who's that at the door down there? 
Down there is the butler's name. <laughs> it's me, uh, Jack Benny. Hello, Barbara. Oh, hello, Jack. A lot of people in her house, too. <laughs> Say, Barbara, Barbara, can you come down a minute? I've got something I want to see you about. Jack, I told you yesterday, I've got enough chili sauce to last me six years. <laughs> oh, oh, it's not about chili sauce. I got a couple of cadets from Santa Ana with me. They want to meet you. Oh, then I'll be right down. Won't you step in and wait, folks? Uh, thank you. By Jove, you certainly are. <laughs> He must be a friend of Mr. Billingsley's, huh? Oh, oh, here's Barbara now. Hello, Mary. How are you, fellas? Hello, Barbara. Gee, glad to meet you, Miss Stanwyck. We've sure been looking forward to this. Hiya, Barbara. Good heavens, Jack. What are you doing in that apron? Oh, for... Mary, why didn't you remind me to take off this apron? I didn't know if you had any pants on. <laughs> I've got pants on, but you can't see them. That Rochester got so patriotic, he cut my cuffs away up to the knees. <laughs> Sit down, fellas. Yes, please do. You know, the boys were over at my house, but they were a little impatient. They uh, were just dying to meet Bab. Bab? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> you. You. All your close friends call you Bab. Well, I'll be darned. <laughs> hmm. Oh, by the way, would you boys care for a sandwich or something? Oh, no, thank you, Miss Stanwyck. Just looking at you is enough. Well, how about your buddy? Would you like a sandwich? I'm looking at Miss Livingston. <laughs> well, say, uh, I'm, uh, I'm hungry, Barbara. I can stand a sandwich. Well, why don't you go out in the kitchen and make one? You're all dressed for it. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. <laughs> well, never mind. I'll just have some of these walnuts here. May I? Go right ahead if I'm not too late. <laughs> Thanks. So you boys are cadets from Santa Ana, huh? Mm -hmm. My name is Bill Orr, and I'm going to be a bombardier. My buddy here, Peter Hayes, is he's studying to be a navigator. Well, that's wonderful. A bombardier and a navigator. I'd like to be a pilot. That's for me. <laughs> Oh, gee, these nuts are good. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Well, how many did I eat? I don't mean that. I mean that the bombardier and the navigator are just as important as the pilot. Their jobs are equally as interesting and require just as much training. All right, all right. I can't be a... I can't be a pilot anyway. I'm over 26. <laughs> or, did they, uh, or did they raise the age limit to 36? Till they put wings on rocking chairs, you don't have to worry. <laughs> I don't know about that. Boy, these are the best walnuts. Gee, Miss Stanwyck, you sure got a beautiful home here. Well, I'm certainly happy you dropped in. Oh, by the way, where are you boys from? Oh, I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I've only been out here about two months. Scranton, Pennsylvania. And where are you from? I'm from St. Joe, Missouri. <laughs> St. Joe, they love me there. <laughs> well, fellas, you've seen Dad, or Bab. Uh, come, come, uh, come back to my house. I'll call up some girls, and the three of us will step out. Now, wait a minute, Jack. The boys will have a better time right here. Besides, I've seen those girls you go out with. <laughs> Did you ever get a load of that one that floats around Beverly Hills on a broomstick? <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Quiet. Oh, I know. Say, Mary, why don't you and I take the boys to the Brown Derby? There's usually a lot of picture people there. Oh, boy, the Brown Derby? Now, we can't go to the Brown Derby. They don't use my chili sauce. Oh, you and your chili sauce. I've tried it, and it's awful. Oh, yeah? Have you ever tried it on lobster? Yes, and the lobster thumbed his feelers at me. <laughs> well, 
Well, naturally, a lobster has to be boiled. Boiled or sober. He didn't like it. <laughs> well, then I guess I better tear up that testimonial I signed your name to. <laughs> Say, I've got an idea. Why can't we all go over to Bob Murphy? Now, look, Jack, you're not coming with us. Barbara and I are going to have lunch with the two boys alone. Yes, and later this evening, we'll go dancing at the Macombo. I can't go dancing. Nobody, Nobody asked, asked you to go. go. Oh, they didn't, eh? Well, let me tell you something. These boys came all the way to Beverly Hills to see me, and I'm going along. If you do, you'll pay the check. We'll see about that, sister. (laughs) Let me tell you something else. Let me tell you something else, you Brooklyn bombshell. When it comes... When it comes... Else. When it comes, when it comes to showing these cadets a good time, I know the hot spots too. I didn't get these bags under my eyes for nothing. <laughs> and that, ladies and gentlemen, is what happened when two cadets from Santa Ana came to visit Barbara Stanwyck at her home in Beverly Hills. They came to visit me, Playfield. Gee, these nuts are good. <laughs> You know, friends, when you stop to think of it, manpower and woman power are really the result of food power. That's why it's so very important for every man and woman in America to eat nourishing food in this war emergency, especially the vital protective foods, foods such as whole grain cereals. And that's why it's important to see the grape nuts flakes appear regularly at your breakfast table. For delicious, toasty brown grape nuts flakes are a whole grain cereal. This means that Grape Nuts Flakes supply important whole grain food values, including three essential nutritive elements, iron, niacin, and vitamin B1. In fact, Grape Nuts Flakes contain more B1 than you'll find in the whole grain itself. So you see, you get a bowl full of real wartime nourishment when you sit down to a breakfast including malty, rich, sweet as a nut, Grape Nuts Flakes. So for real breakfast enjoyment, plus real nourishment to start off the day, Treat your family tomorrow morning to Grape Nuts Flakes. That was the last number in the second program of the new grape... of the new Grape Nuts Flakes program. (laughs) Grape Nuts Flakes. And we're with you at the same time next Sunday. I want to thank Barbara Stanley for coming over here to Santa Ana with us. Thanks, Barbara. Oh, you can call me Bab. Hmm. Well, you see, folks, and she loves my chili sauce, too. Good night, everybody. The Jack Benny program is written by Bill Meyer and Eddie Beloy. Peter Lind Hayes and Bill Orr, who appeared on our program, are cadets here at Santa Ana. The presentation of the broadcast from the Army Air Base at Santa Ana is for the enjoyment of the officers and personnel and does not constitute an endorsement of our product by the War Department. J-E-L-L-O The Jell-O program, coming to you from the Marine Corps Base in San Diego, brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Puddings, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens the program with Call Out the Marines. Have you noticed how extra rich Jell-O is today? Now that Jell-O's wonderful flavor is locked in? Well, there's never been anything like it. Just never been anything more delicious. Locking in Jell-O's flavor heightens its goodness, brings it to a new peak of delight. Now, more than ever, Jell-O's shimmering color and beauty hold a promise of rich enjoyment. A promise that is gloriously fulfilled in Jell-O's bright, refreshing flavor. Flavor so thrillingly good that it makes you think right away of the juicy, ripe fruit itself. Let your next package of Jell-O prove to you the extra richness of Jell-O's locked-in flavor. Open a package of Jell-O. Notice that there's no sweet, fruity odor. No telltale aroma to warn of escaping flavor. Then dissolve the tiny Jell-O particles and notice the way Jell-O's captive goodness comes pouring out with a rush of rich, tangy fragrance and flavor. Ask your grocer tomorrow for several packages of Jell-O. 
and see if you don't agree that Jell-O is better than ever. Now the Jell-O's famous flavor is locked in. Call out the Marines played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, as I announced before, our program this evening comes to you from the United States Marine Corps base in San Diego. Yes, sir. The Marines who sail the seven seas on our battleships and cruisers, who pitch their tents in the blazing heat of tropical jungles or face the wintry winds of the far north. You said it. So without further ado, we bring you a man who thinks Marine is something to drop in your eyes, Jack Benny. <laughs> <laughs> That's murine. I know the difference. <laughs> Anyhow, Jalo again. This is Jack Benny talking. And, Don, that was a beautiful tribute you just gave to the Marines. They're a swell bunch of fellows, and they deserve it. They certainly do. By the way, Jack, during the First World War, you were a Marine yourself, weren't you? Me? Uh, no. Uh, no, I was a... Um, a no, no. Forget it, Don. <laughs> anyway, it... Um, it sure is great. Well, now, Jack, I'm sure these boys here are interested in your military record. Did you serve in the artillery? Uh, no. Uh, the infantry? With my feet? Are you kidding? <laughs> uh, forget it, Don. Forget it. No, no, no. no. I'd like to find out. Which branch of the service were you in? Uh, well, um, well, uh, come here, Don. I'll whisper it to you. Don... I enlisted in the some seven, 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 for three years. Oh, you were a sailor. Quiet. <laughs> Don, for heaven's sake, I want to be friends with these boys. God. Oh, now there's no need of getting upset, Jack. Nowadays, sailors and Marines are the best of friends. Why, they're pals. Pals, eh? Well, years ago when I was in the service, they weren't quite so chummy. I'll, uh, I'll never forget one time when I was at the Great Lakes Naval Training Station. <laughs> you know, I was in love with a girl, and so was this Marine, about six foot two. Your girl? No, the Marine. <laughs> My girl was only six foot. <laughs> uh, that is, in her bare feet. <laughs> well, anyway... Oh, uh, didn't she wear shoes? No, no, this was in the summertime. <laughs> uh, well, anyway... Uh, we both came up to this girl's front door one night, and the Marine said to me, uh, uh, where do you think you're going, tight pants? <laughs> so I, um, I said, I'm going to see Eva. Uh, that was the girl's name, Eva Slatko. <laughs> so this, uh, uh, this Marine said to me, oh, you are, eh? And I said, yeah, you want to make something out of it? And what happened? Um, what was that? What happened? Oh, the next morning, I had three teeth put back in, and I haven't seen the guy since. <laughs> I'm sorry, Don, I missed my place there for a minute. I'm... But as you say, Don, there's no reason why sailors and leathernecks shouldn't get along together. They're all fighting for the same cause. And after all... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. Hi, boys. Well, Mary, here we are in San Diego. Yeah, and let me tell you something. The next time I come down here, it won't be in that Maxwell of yours. What a trip. What's the matter with you? I'm so black and blue, you think I went dancing at the Paris Inn last night. <laughs> Paris Inn? Oh, uh, a dining and dancing spot, eh? Dining, dancing, and raffling. <laughs> Well, I, I, uh, I must go over there later. So you had a pretty tough ride in the Maxwell, huh, Mary? Don, it wouldn't, uh, it would have been a very pleasant trip if we hadn't had that blowout at San Clemente. The blowout was at Laguna Beach. We came down in San Clemente. (laughs) 
All right, for ten minutes, we were unidentified aircraft. <laughs> all we... All we had was a blowout. And that silly experiment of yours. That's what held us up. Mary, that experiment may not have worked, but it's ideas like that that the government wants nowadays. What was it, Mary? Oh. Well, Jack didn't have a spare, so he bought a thousand packages of gum and told Rochester to chew them into a tire. <laughs> Listen, if it had worked, I'd be famous. Well, look who's here. Goldilocks and his three curls. Hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Here I am, men. Tear down the roof. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I'm happy. Then stop. Then stop bowing. Well, I'm thrilled, Jackson. It's sure great to be down here entertaining all these leatherheads. <laughs> They're leather necks. You're the leatherhead. <laughs> However, I must say, uh, gee, I can't understand how I made that mistake before. However, I must say you got here on time for a change. Did you just blow into town, Phil? No, we got in last night, and then Frankie, my guitar player, and me went down to Tijuana. Tijuana, eh? You know, on a goodwill tour. <laughs> I'll bet. Uh, may I inquire what you boys were drinking? A little Mexican buttermilk. Tequila, they call it. <laughs> Tequila? Say, I hear that's pretty strong stuff. You ought to try it sometime, Jackson. First you swallow a glass of it, and then you chew on a lemon. <laughs> I see. And after the fourth drink, if you ain't got a lemon, just chew your glass. It don't make no difference. <laughs> Well, that, uh, that stuff must pack a wallop. Yeah, and on our way home, we were hit by lightning and we bent it. <laughs> oh, stop dreaming it up. Well, Phil, now that we've heard about your adventures in Tijuana, how about playing a band number for the boys? Okay, Jackson. And play something nice, will you? Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? I was wondering, would you like to join the Marines... Yes, I would. Well, join us. We're going to the Paris Inn tonight. Get out of here. <laughs> Silly guy. Gee, I wish I could join the Marines, though. They're a red-blooded organization. They wouldn't give you any whether you join or not. <laughs> I don't want any. Play, Phil. I can't understand how I made a mistake <laughs> on that first <laughs> spot. I don't know what happened to my script, you know. Really, it was amazing. understand how I made that mistake. Oh, well. <clears throat> that was, uh, that was, he's 1A in the Army and A1 in my heart, played by Phil Harris and his internationally famous orchestra. Internationally famous meaning they're as well known in Tijuana as they are in San Diego. <laughs> and, um, and now, ladies and gentlemen. Tijuana, they love me there. <laughs> isn't it amazing? You can't insult the guy. <laughs> I made that mistake. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Jack, can I read my poem now? 
Mary, I told you that you can't do any more of your silly... Food. Hello, Mr. Benny. Here I am. Oh, hello, Dennis. Curtsy. <laughs> Well, our little gang is all assembled. Hey, is Joan Bennett here yet? Quiet. That's our surprise. Hmm, what a kid. Well, Dennis, are you enjoying yourself here in San Diego? I sure am. I went to Balboa Park this morning, and what a zoo they got there. What a zoo! You had fun, eh? Yeah, and you know what, Mr. Benny? What? I saw a baboon there that looked exactly like Fred Allen. Like... <laughs> like... Like Fred Allen, eh? <laughs> That's a good one. He has got long arms, you know. <laughs> uh, what was the baboon doing, Dennis? He was picking fleas off another one that resembled you somewhat. <laughs> hmm. What do you mean? Uh, here's a peanut jack. Catch. Thanks. Now cut that out. <laughs> Say, I must go over and take a look at that baboon that looks like me. I've never seen one with big blue eyes. <laughs> it must be quite a novelty. What else did you see there, Dennis? Well, I saw lions and tigers and elephants, and then I saw a great big dinosaur. Dennis, that's impossible. You couldn't have seen a dinosaur. Of course not. She's in New York with Eddie Cantor. That's dinosaur! <laughs> Phil, that, you're thinking of Dinah Shore. Can I read my poem now? Not now, Mary. I'm leading up to something. All right, Don. Dinah Shore. Oh, Jack, this one is utterly fantastic. <laughs> Don, I won't go through this every week. Dinah Shore. But, Jack, people are beginning to talk. Everybody says, there goes that goofy Wilson. <laughs> I don't want to hear another word about it. Now, go ahead. Dinah Shore. Oh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, the next time you have dinner, be sure to serve Jell-O for dessert. Because whether you dine at sea or dine ashore... <laughs> Wonderful. You will find that Jell-O with its new locked-in flavor is America's favorite gelatin dessert. I'm sorry, Dinah. <laughs> well, personally, Don, I thought it was very, very clever. Too very, Jeff. It's worth it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Day, our tenor... We'll sing... Wait a minute. I'm going to read my poem to these boys. Oh, my goodness. Well, they can take it. That's one thing. What's the title of your poem, Mary? Uh, tell it to the Marines, but don't get tough about it. <laughs> Say, you've got something there. Proceed. <clears throat> I salute all you Marines, old and young and in between. And I really think you're tops. You're just the guys to stop the jobs. <laughs> Jops, you mean Japs. Japs, Japs. Knock the sukiyaki out of them. <laughs> right, uh, continue. You fellas fight on land or sea, in the air, up a tree. They can fight anywhere. And when you boys get liberty, you slug it out over girls like me. <laughs> well, that, that keeps them in condition, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, go ahead. I've gone with boys from Georgia Tech and Yale and Harvard by the peck. But here's one thing I'll say by heck. I'd rather neck a leather neck. Yeah. <laughs> ah, very good, Mary. You know, Mary, Mary, I'm... <laughs> See, they're wonderful here, aren't they? <laughs> you know, Mary, I'm sorry I tried to keep you from reading that poem because this one was really okay. It really was. Come in. Well, who's this? It's a Marine. I know it's a Marine, but who? Uh, hello there. Hello, tight pants. I'm glad to see you again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, glad, glad to see you again. Well, who is it, Jack? I don't know. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Glad to see you. What do you have in the old gang? Oh, you know, same old gang, like you said. You know how it is. <laughs> well, who is he? I'm trying to find out. What, uh, what are you doing here? I'm still in the service. 
By the way, I see you got those three teeth put back in. <laughs> three, three teeth? Oh, hey, wait a minute. You're, you're... Remember Eva Slutko? <laughs> yeah, that's it. You're Bullface Hurley. Say, do you ever see Eva anymore? How can I help it? We married and got four kids. <laughs> four kids. Well, what do you know? Well, sit down. We'll talk things over. Go ahead with your song, Dennis. Okay. Say, Bullface. Remember the time I caught you and Eva dancing at the Y and I socked you right in the jaw? You hit Eva. I did? <laughs> I was running so fast I didn't look back. But I'll, I'll, I'll never forget the time when I took out Eva to Brown's Lake and the canoe tipped over. There's no mountain top so high that somehow love can climb. No, no, true love will find the way There's no river quite so wide That love can cross in time Please believe me When I say You are always in music of the song of love I sang with you. You are always in my heart, and when skies above are gray, I remember that you care, and then and there the sun breaks through. Just before I go to sleep, there's a rendezvous I keep And the dream I always meet Help me forget where far apart I don't know exactly when, dear But I'm sure we'll meet again, dear And my darling, till we do You are always in my heart just before I go to sleep, there's a rendezvous I keep, and the dream I always meet helps me forget where far apart. I don't know exactly when, but I'm sure we'll meet again. My darling, till we do, you are always in my heart. Well, 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 that sure is good news, Bullface. So you named one of your boys after me, eh? Yeah, he was kind of a puny kid. <laughs> oh, uh -huh. well, it's good seeing you again, Bull. Say hello to Eva for me. I will. So long, tight pants. <laughs> so long. So they finally got married. Gee, Eva was a cute gal. I wonder if she ever got shoes. <laughs> I suppose so. Anyway, that was always in my heart, sung by Dennis Day. And dedicated to Miss Joan Bennett. Where is she? Oh, she ought to be here any minute, Dennis. Well, I hope so. A man can stand just so much, you know. <laughs> what? What are you talking about? Well, Miss Bennett and I got to be pretty good friends on the way down here. Pretty good friends. <laughs> Dennis, the only reason Miss Bennett sat on your lap is because the car was crowded. Say, I wonder what is keeping Joan. I doubt if she shows up at all after that trip in the Maxwell. She'll be here, don't worry. Imagine asking Joan Bennett to ride down here in that broken-down jalopy. She's a big movie star. Well, what am I, a manhole cover? <laughs> huh? You got about as much hair as one. All right, I'm a manhole cover. And remember that on payday, because I won't be able to sign your check. You keep that up, Miss Livingston. Well, here she is, fellas. Come on in, Joan. We've been waiting for you. Hello, Jack. Hello, everybody. <laughs> there.
there. You see, Mary, she's here and she looks wonderful. Well, Joan, I was a little worried about you. Uh, how do you feel after your ride down here in my Maxwell? How do I feel? Now I know what a mold of milk goes through. <laughs> Well, you see, you're a little light, Joan. I'll tell you what. On the way back, I'll let Dennis sit on your lap. Put Don Wilson there. That'll do the trick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything you want, Joan. Oh, boy, ain't she a dish. Dennis. <laughs> Dennis, oh, behave yourself. Leave him alone, Jack. You were young once yourself. And I still am, Joni. I still am. He takes a little vitamin B and he wants to skip rope. <laughs> oh, sure. Say, uh, Joan, uh, you remember Phil Harris, don't you? Why, certainly. Hello, Phil. Hello, Joan. Ever hear Alice say she's my wife? <laughs> <laughs> Phil, what a guy. Well, Joan, this is certainly... This is certainly like old times, isn't it? You and I working together again. Yes, Jack. It's been over three years now. Remember that picture we made called Artists and Models Abroad? Do I? I'll never forget it. And, Joan... I've got a confession to make. Now, you didn't know it at the time, but you were the first leading lady I ever kissed. What do you mean I didn't know it? <laughs> uh, what? You should have seen him, Mary. He was so nervous he missed my upper lip entirely. <laughs> Well, I did pretty good, considering I had my eyes closed. That would never happen with me, sister. Dennis, pipe down. <laughs> Say, Joan, I've been wondering. I've thought of this often. Why is it you and I have never made another picture together? Jack, you asked me that a dozen times on the way down here, and I told you. But, Joan, I don't eat salami anymore. <laughs> Honest, I don't. Well, I'm glad of that. And I'll say one thing for you, Jack. Your acting has improved. Well, I hit both lips now. If that's, <laughs> if that's what you mean, yes, ma'am. Not only that, but I saw your picture the other night, and I just couldn't believe that Jack Benny was playing Hamlet. That was me, all right. <clears throat> to be or not to be. That is the question. Someone give him the answer. He does this every five minutes. <laughs> Mary. So you liked me as Hamlet, eh, Joan? I certainly did. And what amazed me, Jack, was the way you looked in tight. Your legs were simply gorgeous. Oh, you're just saying that. <laughs> Heavens to Betsy. <laughs> my, my legs gorgeous. They really are. Why, everybody in Hollywood is saying they're even prettier than Betty Grable. Prettier than Betty... Oh, ho, so that's why she's been snubbing me lately. <laughs> now I get a jealousy. Well, Joan, getting back to me... Excuse me a minute. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. <laughs> oh, hello, Rochester. Pardon me, Joan, I'll be with you in a minute. Hello, Rochester. What do you want? I got the Maxwell all gassed up and everything. What time tomorrow morning are we going to take off? Well, we're leaving the hotel at 7 a.m. sharp. But, boss, I won't be getting in till half past eight. <laughs> getting in? Now, wait a minute, Rochester. I let you go to a party last night. You don't have to go to another party tonight. Oh, well, this is the same one. <laughs> same one? Only we're switching from gin to Mexican buttermilk. <laughs> Oh, I see. Uh, you know, they got a regular little Harlem down here. I don't care. We're leaving tomorrow morning promptly at 7. I don't want to hear another word about it. But, Mr. Benny... I'm asking him now, honey. But, but, Mr. Benny... Just a second, Rochester. Who did you just say honey to? Me? Yes, you. Who is honey? He's a cousin of mine, boss. Honeydew Van Jones. <laughs> what? Junior. <laughs> Rochester, you're not telling me the truth. You're at a party, and you were talking to a girl. And if I don't stop talking to you, I'm a loser. The wolves are closing in. <laughs> Rochester, sometimes I can't understand you. You've got a girl in Los Angeles, haven't you? Uh-huh. For two years now, you've been going steady together. Uh-huh. Well, then let me ask you something. Did you ever hear of Fidelity? Oh, yeah, that's an insurance company, ain't it? <laughs> 
I don't mean that. I mean you should be true to one girl. Oh, Bob, reconsider! <laughs> well, I'm not going to argue any more about it. I want you to be at the El Cortez Hotel at 7 a.m. So long. So long! Will I try it, honey? <laughs> I have more trouble with that guy. Always wants his own way. Pardon me, Jack. Yes, Jones. Did I understand you to say that you're driving back tomorrow at 7 a.m.? Yes, I'll uh, have to pick you up bright and early. Well, bring along a first aid kit. I might snap at you. Good, good. And, Joan, I do want to thank you for coming down here and helping entertain these Marines. I love doing it. And, incidentally, our program is being sent every week by delayed shortwave to our armed forces everywhere. It is? Well, then, Jack, if I promise to ride back with you and your Maxwell, will you do me a favor? Why, certainly. What is it? May I say hello to General MacArthur and his men? Of course. Hello, General. Keep up the good work. But who has to tell you? You said it. Play, Phil. Take dinner tomorrow night something really out of the ordinary by serving the family this swell jello treat. It's cardinal pear mold. Rich, juicy pears embedded in a shimmering mold of bright red raspberry jello. Nothing could be more tempting to the eye or more delightful to the taste than this grand jello dessert. And nothing could be easier to make. Now, here's all you do simply dissolve one package of jello imitation raspberry flavor in a pint of hot water. Add one eighth teaspoon of powdered ginger. Turn into mold. Chill until firm. Unmold and garnish with sections of canned pears. You'll say that it's one of the most delicious mouth watering desserts that ever came your way. A dessert that you'll love from the first spoonful to the last. So tomorrow, when you make up this tempting combination of juicy canned pears and beautiful red raspberry jello, remember jello today is extra rich thanks to the jello's new locked in flavor. Thanks again, Joan Bennett, and good night, folks. The Jell-O program is written by Bill Meyer and Ed Beloyne. The fact that this show was broadcast in the Marine base did not constitute an endorsement of the product advertised by the War Department. <laughs>